the survival of America. And I mean trust. I trust that he will most likely be able to follow through on providing us with the greatest national security on issues such as defense, border security, immigration. There's no other candidate that can get the job done. There are others who promise that they will do things, but they cannot get the job done. Rand Paul is unelectable. He's a crank. Uh, Ted Cruz, unelectable. He cannot get the job done. Good man, smart man, not a perfect man, not a purist by any means, if you actually analyze his background. Certainly more socially conservative than Donald Trump. I, I give you that. I admit that. I'm not denying it. However, he can't get, can't get anything done. Even if he could win, which I doubt, he could not get Congress behind him. You know, one thing I learned way back when was during the era of Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was a, a, a liberal a Democrat through and through, big man from Texas, huge man. And that's an important point that I'm making right now. <laughs> I hate to make it sound like what I'm going to say, but size matters in politics. You may not know this, but commanding people requires a certain presence. That's true in the military. It's true in politics. It's not 100% true. Al Capone was five foot three, but he was a maniac. I get that. Uh, there are murderers who were short who can scare the heck out of big guys. I get all of that. But in the general election, size matters. Size of the candidate. I know you don't believe this. You know, you never heard this before. Now, where is he talking? Where's the savage getting this stuff from? I didn't read that in the National Review. Size matters. I didn't read that anywhere. Well, of course you didn't. I'm an original which is why I've been ostracized my whole life in the media. The very forces that are mocking, mocking Trump have been mocking me for years. When I first came along, they said, he'll destroy, he'll destroy the conservative movement, that savage. He's too vocal. He's too New York. He's too real. He's too this. He's too that. Well, they were wrong. Whatever they said was wrong. Here I am. 21 years later, how much longer it'll be, only, only, it's up to God, not up to me. <laughs> there are forces way out of my control, and I know that. Commercial, uh, physical, all sorts of forces that are in play here with regard to myself. But I'm talking about Donald Trump. I'm not talking about me. It's a little bit of me mixed in. But I can relate to what he's going through. As rich as he is, he's an outsider. As powerful as he is, he's an outsider to the political establishment. The Republicans hate him. The Democrats fear him. Do you understand that? Does it sound familiar to you? Does that sound like someone you know in the media? The independent? And the reason I da back him is because as a pragmatist, even though he may be a social liberal in so many areas, I think that he can make America survive on national security, immigration, border security. Why? Because he can get things done. He is a deal maker. And I said to you, even if the purest candidate, who many of you love and respect, would win, which I doubt, he cannot get anything done. He will create not gridlock in Congress, but it would be a something else, a log jam like you've never seen. There would be no movement whatsoever. There would be a log jam for the next four years. There would be constant partisan warfare, and during this time, the world's greatest threat, ISIS, would continue to metastasize into a greater cancer. Tens of millions of new immigrants would pour over the border. We cannot afford this logjam. We cannot afford the logjam or the gridlock. And that is why I, Michael Savage, am a pragmatist. Well, we're waiting to find out if my prediction is that Trump may do both events tonight and that News Dancer has been told to constrain our, her, uh, her high kicks. She's having a very good time, the News Dancer, on, on Fox with the high, the, high, the high kicks. But they've told her to, uh, to cool it, that it's not the Follies Berger and to just act a little more demure, you know, or she can take a walk over to Good Morning America with the new hairdo, is my guess, to be very blunt. You know, you're listening. That's my... This is why they don't like me at the National Review. They don't even know what I just said. They don't know the average... They don't know common language. I read you, Rudyard Kipling, for a reason. If you can walk with kings and never lose the common touch, well, I do both. I walk with kings and I've never lost the common touch. So if I speak in... 
a language that the average person could understand. It, it offends the brilliant people at the National Review who've written books that no one reads. They're revolted by the fact that my books are bestsellers. They don't refer to them. They don't review them. You never see any review for Michael Savage. Right, well, he doesn't write books, but it's a bestseller. It doesn't matter. We don't, we don't accept it. He doesn't write in our language. He's not, he's not a feat enough for us. He's not one of us in the effete establishment of the conservative movement, which doesn't exist except in their own minds. Where is the Tea Party, by the way, that people thought existed? I, where is it? It was sort of a fantasy. The Tea Party, what was the Tea Party? Where is it? There are people hanging on, a Tea Party. Okay, there were people who were excited by the fact that we might have a government that represented us fiscally. That was the Tea Party. How'd that work out with Boehner and, uh, and McConnell and now with Ryan? So you're saying, well, what, you want more of that? No, I want less of that. And frankly, Trump as a businessman is liable to balance the books, at least a little bit more so, is my guess. He's going to be forced to be a little more businesslike. He might just balance the books. You want to make it more fiscally understandable? Ted Cruz, so far as I know, never ran an ice cream stand. Did Ted Cruz ever have a business? Was he ever a caddy, a waiter, a busboy? I don't know. Did he run a, a restaurant somewhere? I don't know. Did he ever run a business? Look it up. I don't think he's a business person. He has no, no real grounding. He's a politician. He went from Canada to Harvard to Texas. Did he run a business? He's an academic elitist, for God's sakes. Look what we have in the White House now. From Kenya, uh, I mean Hawaii, I mean Kenya, I mean uh, Indonesia, to Harvard, to the White House. And look what we got with that elitist. You see what I mean? You get it? If you can walk with kings and never lose the common touch. Michael Savage back. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. You know, while we're talking, we have a virus spreading in America called the Zika virus. And I'm holding my fire on it because it's going to be lost in this discussion this week till after the... I'll, I mean, I'll talk about it next week. But even today, we see there's a panic spreading. Zika virus could become explosive pandemic. That's according to the World Health Organization. We, Meanwhile, here in America, Obama's stooges at the NIH, Anthony Fauci, has a nice suit, by the way says we don't expect a major Zika virus outbreak. That's what the stooge is telling you, the puppet of the, uh, of the uh, CDC. The NIH, excuse me, Anthony Fauci, who should be replaced, incidentally. He's been there too long. He's a politician. He's not a scientist. He simply does what those who control him tell him to say. So he says, no, there'll be no outbreak of Zika. Meanwhile, WHO says the Zika virus could become explosive pandemic. So the world that, that Obama and his puppets at the NIH are living in are not the real world which is why I want to run the NIH and the CDC and other divisions for Donald Trump, because I will not lie to anybody in America about the dangers we face, which is why they hate me. And that's why I wrote Diseases Without Borders, by the way, which I'm not going to talk about till next week. It's a, it's a simple book. It's very cheap. It's an e-book only. It's two ninety nine. I'm not going to get rich on it, but I want people to understand there are origins of viruses like the Zika virus. It is related to politics. It's related to open borders. There are things you can do to build up your immunity against viral illnesses, despite what the government will tell you. You can take control of your life, whether it's the common cold or, or other viral illnesses. You certainly can fortify your immune system. What? That's not common sense? Your mother told you that. But now we've forgotten. Now you have to turn to a scientist for common sense. We have new and resurgent diseases, I wrote, resulting from unregulated immigration and a politicized public health system. Michael Savage sees the need for some changes, starting with the president and the Center for Disease Control telling us the truth. Travel bans, the use of quarantines for people coming in from some of these high rates of infection, areas of high rates of infection, proper border screenings, uh, but there are things you can do. And I don't care if you're a liberal, you better listen to me because I have extensive knowledge in this area. You can mock me if you wish. But I warn you, mock me at your own risk. Because no one's going to tell you what I know about the politics of medicine, epidemiology being played out by the Obama mandarins. And if you want to defend your body against deadly diseases, even if you detest me, you ought to really take a check. Check it out. Download it next week when it's available. 
I can't believe the timing of this book. And I'm glad that I'm able to help people. It's number one already in Kindle stores in health and fitness. In one, two days, number one in Kindle. Number one in health and fitness with no promotion? What does that tell you? Well, it tells you maybe people want to turn to any source for the truth. Maybe they're so fed up with lies. Now, you want to listen to lies, in my opinion. Listen to clip number two. Here's the NIH director, Anthony Fauci, saying there's nothing to worry about. Listen to clip two. We do not believe that there will be a major outbreak of Zika not in the United States. Not believe. We don't want to be cavalier about it. We want to take uh, it very cavalier. seriously. But if Zika acts like the other types of viruses yes. that are mosquito-borne yes. that we've had experience with, like dengue and chikungunya, we will yeah. see right. little mini all right, outbreaks. All right. We got the picture. We do not believe if it acts like cavalier. What does he want to be, Chesterfield about it? Sounds like a cigarette brand. And say saying the answer is to use mosquito repellent. That's really great. Okay, clip three now. Here, here's the answer from the head of the Center for Disease, the National Institutes of Health, Anthony Fauci, who's been in, in the position so long. The guy is like a politician. Listen to clip three. Right now, the urgent response is really vector control, namely to make sure that the mosquito vectors really are controlled. And right. you can do yeah, that okay. by... From, this is from 1941. This is a textbook answer, like a review book on epidemiology. Right now, the urgent vector control. You hear vector control is the answer. That means to spray ponds. I think Mussolini did that in Italy in the 1930s. It's what made him very popular. He cleaned up the vectors. That's all. Right now, he says, "Don't worry. It's only mosquitoes that can do it." Really? No kidding. It's only mosquitoes. How do you like that? So you mean if someone gets it from a mosquito, they can't give it to anyone else, Anthony? You didn't read your Epidemiology 101? Well, you forgot that? All right, let's get back to politics as we know it, not medical politics, and get down to the pragmatist versus the purist. Now, Cruz is not a purist in any case, but purists like Cruz because he's more socially conservative than Trump. I understand that. I get it. So Cruz now attacks Trump and says things that are disgusting, and he's, he, he loses. Hold it. Where is it? He loses the Rudyard Kipling test. Listen to clip number five and I'll tell you what I mean. Apparently, Mr. Trump considers Megyn Kelly very, very scary. She might oh, ask a mean in. question and who knows what could happen. I mean, his hair could stand on end. Oh and I'm going to propose a venue, Western Iowa oh Tech, right, Saturday night. In Sus in. Turn it off. He sounds worse by the day. Instead of rising to the occasion, Cruz fell for the occasion. He violated the Kipling test. You know what that Kipling test is? And that is, if you are being lied about, don't deal in lies, Ted. Or being hated, don't give way to hating, Ted. Ted, you failed the Kipling test in the Savage Nation. Why don't you go back to Harvard where you belong and teach constitutional law? You ought to teach constitutional law at Harvard and browbeat the poor children. WJR, John, fire away 30 seconds or less. Michael, hi. Uh, regarding this purist versus uh, um, pragmatist uh, dynamic, I think that, uh, that Trump's um, uh, rivals right now are like shiny Christmas tree ornaments that you bring out once a year and you look at them and you admire them. And then after the season is over, you put them back in the box and put them away. I don't know that they're ornaments. I, they're very mean-spirited. For Cruz to do this and say it's scary, he's feeding right into the narrative of Michael Moore. He's feeding the narrative of Rachel Madcow, that Trump is afraid of Megyn Kelly. He's not afraid of her. He just refuses to be destroyed by her. He just refuses to not permit the news dancer to kick him in the, in the nose again. That, that's not fearing anything. You know, the news dancer didn't uh, raise the heels on Cruz, did she? Ask yourself why the news dancer didn't go after Ted Cruz. And that tells you everything you need to know about this election. Because Cruz does not threaten Hillary. Trump threatens Hillary. And never forget the News Corporation is backing Hillary. Never forget for a minute that I think it's 19% of News Corporation is owned by Prince Alawid of Saudi Arabia. Do you know that or don't you? Does anyone remember that? Do you recall that or not, John? No, I was not aware of that, but it doesn't... Oh, well, there you go. Let's see if it's up on my website. I sent it over this morning. 
Oh, it should be up. Come on, Art. Where are you? 